All right, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to our yoga class. I'll invite you to just make your way into a comfortable seated position. Feel free to bring your blanket underneath you for a little added support. Now I realize each one of you is practicing at home or not at a studio of any kind today. So just take care of your own body and I'll offer a lot of different options today. So you can just do what feels best in your body. Comfortable seat might be cross-legged, but you can also extend one or both legs out in front of you or even sit up on a few pillows or blocks. Let your hands rest on your thighs or your knees, turning your palms down just to support a little bit of grounding in your body. Notice where your sits bones are connected to the floor, to your mat. And just spend a moment sensing into that area where you are grounded and anchored. Can you soften around your belly a little bit, allowing your chest to open, your shoulders relax down your back? You can just allow your gaze to settle <clears throat> at a single point in front of you, or you can close your eyes. And feel your spine making a long straight line up and down the center of your back, allowing crown of your head to reach up gently toward the ceiling. Begin to notice your breathing. Letting your jaw relax, your teeth separate in your mouth. Feel free to either continue just allowing your natural breath to flow or start to lengthen your breath gently without forcing your breath, simply allowing it to be a little longer every round. As you begin to lengthen your breath, just notice what effect that has on your shoulders and on the rest of your body. Keeping your shoulders relaxed, begin to lower your chin toward the center of your chest. Your hands can stay where they are or for a little bit more of a neck stretch, tent your fingertips on the floor behind you. So your fingers will point toward the wall behind you. And you can play around here, walking your fingers more behind you, in towards center, behind your back. Just exploring what allows for a nice stretch of your neck, keeping your jaw relaxed. If your hands walk all the way together and you'd like to clasp your hands behind your back and draw your shoulders together, you can feel free to do that too. And start to walk your hands back to rest on your thighs. And let's stretch the right side of the neck. So let your left ear gently reach toward your left shoulder. And just a reminder for anyone who has any issues with your, your neck, your head, your shoulders, just take these poses really slow in the beginning as you just allow your body to kind of settle into each shape 
and see how it's affecting you. And you might just do a really tiny version of each one of these poses. And start to lower chin back to center of your chest and make your way over to the other side, right ear toward your right shoulder, any amount. Still noticing your breathing. Can you continue to allow for that longer breath even as you're stretching your neck? Let's lower the chin back down to the center of the chest. From neutral, lift your head back up to center. Just allowing your shoulders to stay soft here. Using an inhale, start to reach your arms out and up around your body. Palms might come together above you. Exhale, bring your hands straight down through heart center. Inhale, sweep your arms out and up. This time as you lift your arms, keep them separated, spinning your palms toward each other. Draw your shoulders gently down your back, allowing for some space around your neck. If it's available to you here, you can bend at your elbows and just gently catch the back of your head in interlaced fingers. Just making a little basket for the back of your head. And just gently allowing the back of your neck to lengthen so you can draw your hands a little by little up toward the ceiling. Kind of tractioning out your neck. One more breath, keeping your lowest ribs coming into your body. Using your exhale, just release your hands. Let's make fists and start to circle your wrists. Letting your shoulders relax. You can let your shoulders have a little wiggle if you want. I'm just going to find a wrist release here. And at the same time, relax your jaw. And just get, gently start to gaze over to the left side. Not to the point of straining your neck, just backing away from that point a little bit. So you're getting a nice stretch, gazing over left shoulder, still circling wrists. Let's make your way over to the other side, just gazing forward. And let's gaze over the right shoulder. Jaw stays relaxed. And gazing back to center, you can release your hands back to your thighs. All right, just a few more seated poses. If you need to change the cross of your legs or do anything to be more comfortable for a little bit longer, make any adjustments as needed. Using an inhale, begin to reach arms out and up again. Joining the palms, you have the option to gaze to the ceiling, lifting your heart. Using an exhale, slide your hands down through center, shoulders soften down your back. Let's do two more just like that. So you can just either reach up or you might find that little lift in the heart and with your gaze, reaching fingers to the ceiling. Then as you exhale, settling all that energy back down toward your mat. Moving at your own pace, keeping your breath long. Begin to bring your right fingertips behind your back, just tenting them on the floor. Inhale, lift your left hand up. As you exhale, find a twist through your upper body. Left hand comes outside of right thigh or onto your knee. Your right fingertips can just stay tented behind you, or if you'd like, keep walking that hand behind you, perhaps 
reaching around and holding onto your left thigh. So just finding a little bind here if that's available in your body. Noticing what areas might feel a little tight here and just inviting a deeper breath into those places. As you exhale, let yourself unwind. Other side, left fingertips tent behind your back. Inhale, the right arm reaches up. As you exhale, come into your twist. Adding on the bind if you'd like to, and just working in that direction. Bring some awareness to your heart and visualize your shoulders and your ribs just wrapping around your heart, gently twisting to your left. Using your next exhale, let's unwind, make your way back to neutral. And from here, I'll invite you to transition to hands and knees into table pose. And if you'd like that padding under your knees, you can feel free to open up your blanket across your mat. You can also use a towel or whatever you have available. And then we'll stack our shoulders above, above our wrists hips above knees. Take a moment to gaze back between your thighs and line your feet up so they're directly behind your knees, toenails pressing down into the mat. Ground down through your finger pads, especially of the index and middle finger. Feel your shoulders broaden on your back and your spine start to get longer, the crown of your head reaching toward the front of your room, your tailbone gently reaching toward the back. I'll invite you to start with some cat cows today, using your inhale to lower your belly and lift your gaze, lifting your tailbone. Your exhale, pin your navel to your spine, and then press into the floor as you curl your tailbone under and tuck your chin. Inhale, again, shoulders roll back, tailbone lifts, gaze forward. And exhale, the opposite motion, surrounding through shoulders and your spine. And keep going at your own pace. And these movements might be really small or they might be really big in your spine. Just invite you to make this practice your own. Finding your way back to a table pose with a neutral spine. Let's find puppy pose, <clears throat> excuse me, puppy pose, tucking your toes under on both feet. Find a little engagement of your belly and then walk your hands forward toward the front of your mat. Start to lower your heart down toward the floor. Your forehead might rest on a block or your mat. Elbows stay lifted here if that's available. Broadening across your shoulders, just lengthening your spine. Press down through your finger pads, especially of your index and middle finger. Lengthen your arms and the sides of your body, letting your tailbone reach up and back.
as you feel ready, walk your hands back under your shoulders and push yourself up. Then we'll untuck the toes, walk your knees out wide, and find a child's pose by bringing your big toes to touch behind you and pressing your hips back toward your heels, any amount. I like walking my hands forward before I lower my upper body just to lengthen through the arms and the sides of the body. And then let your forehead melt again onto a block or the mat. Inhale, lift your gaze. Tent the fingertips on your left hand and lift your elbow. And you'll lift your heart off the floor just enough to take that right arm, palm turned up toward the ceiling, and reach it underneath your left arm. So we'll find a threaded needle, but from our child's pose today. You can allow your hips to lift up any amount that you need here in order to work that right arm under your body and under the left arm. Then as you're ready, start to lower back down onto your right shoulder. The right side of your head can rest on a block, a pillow, or your mat. Just turning your gaze underneath your left upper arm. Breathing full breaths into any tight spaces. Slowly begin to make your way back out, reaching your right arm forward, tenting the fingers on your right hand. Let's go to the other side. So left arm, turn your palm up on that left hand, reach your left arm under your right. Little twist in your upper back as you lower onto left shoulder. And the left side of your head can come down as well. Resting it on a block is a great idea if it feels like the floor is kind of far away to rest your head. Keeping an active right arm, elbow lifting, just gazing underneath your right armpit. Gradually make your way back out. And just reach both hands toward the front of your mat. Again, let's find one more child's pose in center, just letting your forehead or one cheek come down. If your shoulders need a rest, you can wrap your arms around the outside of your legs, allowing shoulders to round forward. And notice how your hips are doing here. If they need a little break, you can let yourself start to come out lifting hips. Or you might notice there's some more space or sensation in your hips after hanging out in child's pose for several minutes. Gazing forward, reach your arms forward and start to make your way back up. It's really taking your time to transition back onto your hands and knees. Table pose, walking knees underneath your hips. 
And for about six or eight breaths here, I'll invite you just to find any kind of movement from your table pose. Maybe more cat cows, circling your hips, or just letting your body kind of move in whatever way it feels like it wants to move this morning. Continuing to breathe through whatever kind of movement you're finding. <clears throat> You can involve your neck, your shoulders, your spine, and your hips. And I'll invite you to either rest in table pose or a child's pose or find your first downward facing dog by tucking the toes under, keeping your knees bent as you lift your hips up and back. And then you might find a little movement through your legs, shifting your weight from one foot to the other, stretching out your calves and your hamstrings. Knowing that at any point, if you'd like to take rest from down dog, you can simply bring knees back down to the floor, finding a table or a child's pose. Let your head nod a little bit if you're in down dog, releasing your neck. Taking your time, gaze forward. Let's all make our way up to the front of the mat. So walking up to the front from table or down dog and making your way into a flat back when you get there. So you'll want feet hips width distance. Fingertips might come onto blocks, the floor, or you can bring hands onto your shins. We just want a pose here where we're lengthening the spine. So drawing the shoulders back, and reaching the crown of your head forward. Notice how your feet are planted on the floor here. Are you gripping with your toes? Just get curious about that and see if you can even out your weight across the balls, toes, and heels of your feet. Gently, energetically lifting the inner arches. Use your next exhale to bend your knees more and fold the rest of the way forward over both legs. Let your upper body just hang forward, releasing your neck, your shoulders, and your spine. If you'd prefer to find a rag doll, you can hold opposite elbows or interlace your hands into elbow creases and allow the weight of your arms to continue lengthening your spine. Still aware of your feet, your legs, how they're holding you. About three more long breaths here. A reminder that you can bend your knees more if you feel tense in your low back. Let's release hands down toward the floor and use your next inhale to find flat back. Lifting your heart, drawing your shoulders back. Keep a little bend in your knees so you can really connect with your feet on the floor. And let's bring our hands onto our hips. 
As you feel ready, press down into your feet and use an inhale to lift your heart the rest of the way up. Coming all the way up to a standing pose and then releasing your arms down beside you for mountain pose. Find a long breath in through your nose and then just sigh it out your mouth. Letting your body start to settle into this standing pose. Your gaze softens directly in front of you. Hips stacking over your ankles, shoulders stacking over your hips. From here, bring your left hand to rest on the outside of your left leg. Using an inhale, reach your right arm up toward the ceiling. Then with your exhale, find a gentle side bend. Right fingertips reach up and over as your left hand just gently slides down your leg. So this version of a side bend takes a little bit more core work. So hold the upper body upright, keeping the spine long. Notice what happens if you begin to shift your weight a little more to your left foot or a little more to your right foot. And you might just experiment there. See how your body would like to stretch in this pose. And slowly begin the release. Right arm down, let's come back to our mountain pose, spinning both palms forward, taking a breath. And then to the other side as you're ready, just bringing your right hand to rest outside of your right thigh, reaching left arm up toward the ceiling. And at your own pace, find your side bend on the other side. Noticing your breathing. If it's hard to breathe, just let yourself come out of the pose a little bit at a time. Feeling free to explore shifting your weight to either foot, noticing how that changes your stretch. Using an exhale, start to make your way out, releasing the left arm. Coming back into that equal standing posture, just letting your gaze land directly in front of you. Or if you'd like for a few breaths, just close your eyes, bringing your awareness inside your body. Noticing where there's a sense of energy or something stretching, any kind of sensation. And one of the ways yoga makes us more resilient people is that we can encounter a lot of these uncomfortable sensations on our mat. But through our yoga practice, we can learn how to be in some discomfort, be in a new experience, but still be able to breathe and feel our feet on the floor. If your eyes are closed, start to flutter your eyelids open. I'll invite everyone to bring hands onto your hips. And make your way into a warrior two pose, the right foot forward, stepping your left foot back. Feel free to leave your blanket on your mat if you want it for padding, because we will be coming back down onto our knee shortly. This is our first hip opener of practice, so you might not have a super long warrior two yet. You can just figure out what feels best at this moment. 
bending into your right knee with your right toes pointing forward. Left toes at an angle out to the side with a really engaged left leg. Hands can rest on your hips at any point or you can keep them out reached, extended, gazing over your front fingertips. Let's just find some movement in the upper body, letting your right hand reach forward and then your left hand reach back, pulling your upper body moving through your hips and just find a few more of those gently starting to open up through the hip joints see if your tailbone can wag a little back and forth Start to make your way back into warrior two, the straight spine. And flip your right hand over and start to reach your right hand forward. So right palm turns up toward the ceiling. Then right hand reaches up. Left hand rests lightly on your back thigh. Relaxing your jaw, move your gaze slowly down toward your back foot. Legs are strong, still bending into your front knee. As you exhale, transition into side angle, bringing your right forearm across your right thigh. Then lift your left hand straight up toward the ceiling. So we're stacking our shoulders, spinning your heart to the left side of the room. If it's okay in your body, you want a longer stretch here, you can reach your left hand forward directly in front of you and then start to sweep it overhead. Spinning your pinky down toward the floor to protect your shoulder and maybe starting to spin your heart more toward the ceiling. See if the stretch can come from your back foot pressing down into the floor. Start to feel your feet under you. And as you inhale, you're gonna press down into the feet and reverse warrior again. Right arm sweeps up. Then with your exhale, transitioning slowly, windmill hands down and come up onto the toes of your back foot. Your hands can be on blocks here to bring the floor closer to you. So find your way into this lunge position and you can keep your back knee lifted today if that's available or feel free at any point just to bring your knee down. Right knee stacks over right ankle. Plant your left hand on a block or the floor under your shoulder. And using an inhale, reach your right arm up toward the ceiling, twisting your upper body to the right. Well, back knee is lifted if you want a more active stretch for a more restorative practice, which might be great today. Bring your left knee down to the floor. As you exhale, bring your right hand back down to the ground or a block. Let's all lower our back knee if it's still lifted and untuck your back toes. Ground down through the ball of your right foot. And using an inhale, bring your hands up onto your right thigh. And take a moment to find some stability here. And bring awareness to your core, just kind of hugging in around your navel, keeping focus on that midline of your body. And you can also settle your gaze at a single point.
If this feels like enough for you right now, you can feel free to stay here. If you'd like a bit more in this front hip flexor, I'll invite you to keep your right hand on your right thigh. And then inhale, your left arm starts to reach up toward the ceiling. And as much as you feel comfortable, you might start to let your hips move forward as your heart continues to lift. As you exhale, let's float that left hand back down, coming onto fingertips or hands on blocks. Now I'll invite you all to transition, however makes sense for you, back to table pose. And either stay in your table pose or find a plank. Shoulders above your wrists, lifting your knees, super strong through your legs and your belly. Really pressing the floor away from you and building some strength in your body. Feel free to lower your knees anytime. Four more breaths. Two more breaths. Using your next exhale, start to lower yourself down, either in one piece or bringing your knees down keeping your belly strong as you bend your elbows beside your ribs. Let's roll all the way onto our bellies. Roll over your toes, pressing the tops of your feet down. Walk your palms back a little bit. So your fingertips are in line with your ribs, shoulders drawing toward each other on your back. So I'll take a moment here, just resting forehead on the floor. Feeling both of your hands completely connecting to your mat, palms, the finger pads, elbows drawing in toward your rib cage. As you're ready, press down into your feet and use an inhale to lift your gaze and your heart for a baby cobra pose. So coming up not too high, keeping very little weight in your hands. Legs are strong, toes pointing, toenails grounding down into the mat. As you exhale, let your body relax. Bring one of your cheeks down to the floor and send your arms down beside you with your palms turning up. Just allow a few long natural breaths as you take a moment to relax and rest your body. When you feel ready, set yourself up for another round of cobra pose. So palms beside your rib cage, elbows and shoulders drawing down your back. Pressing down to the tops of your feet to strengthen your legs. As you inhale, find your cobra. And you might come up a little higher this time if that's available. I'll just invite you to keep your hip bones on the floor. One more inhale. As you exhale, let yourself float back down. Let the other cheek rest. Arms down beside you. Taking your time. Make your way back into either table pose or downward facing dog. 
Just pressing yourself back up on the hands and knees. Stay there or tuck toes under and lift your hips up and back. Find a few breaths just to check in with your body. Noticing if there's anything you might need, any adjustments you need to make to be more comfortable. At the bottom of your next exhale, gaze forward and make your way up to the front of your mat. We'll meet there in a flat back. Taking an inhale to lengthen your spine. Your exhale, soften your knees, fold forward over your legs. Keeping your knees soft, start to gaze forward, flipping your palms over. As you inhale, push down into your feet, rising all the way up, sweeping arms out and up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Let your thumbs rest at the center of your chest. Your eyes might close, <clears throat> or you can just let your gaze rest directly in front of you. Once again, just tuning your awareness inward with your thumbs pressing into your sternum. Allow things to get quiet inside and see if you can sense your heart beating. And just know that if you're not sensing your heart beating, that's really normal. It takes, can take some time and practice to be able to sense that. Letting your eyes flutter open if they're closed. Let's find our warrior two with the left foot forward. So I'm going to switch which side of my mat is the front. And this side's going to be the front of my mat now. The left foot's forward, bending into left knee. Right foot is now at an angle to the right. As you bend into that front knee, make sure it's not caving in toward the center of your mat. Rather, it's pressing out toward the wall to the left of you. Adding on your arms, letting your shoulders be broad and relaxed, your neck long. Finding that little movement from before, letting your front hand reach forward and then your back hand reach back. And just slowly starting to open through the hips in this direction. Can you sense your hips rocking a little bit side to side? Can you sense any movement in your tailbone? No, the legs are staying pretty much the same here, really holding the upper body with strength. The next time you reach forward with that left hand, let's flip the palm over. Using your inhale, just lift left hand straight up as right hand rests lightly on your right thigh. Keep the lunge in your front knee and start to move your gaze down toward your back foot. Instead of resting weight in that back hand, Press your leg into your hand. The back of your leg presses into your hand to keep your leg strong and straight. Using an exhale, start to make your transition into side angle, resting left forearm or elbow across left thigh. And then letting your right arm reach straight up toward the ceiling, stacking your shoulders. Let's all just start here and feeling into this shape in your body. 
Hearts opening to the right, maybe even a little bit toward the ceiling. And if you like that option from last time to sweep your arm overhead, you can reach the right arm forward directly out from your shoulder and then sweep it gently overhead, spinning your pinky down toward the floor. Again, we're just really letting the stretch come from the back foot. So we're staying rooted and connected to the ground, even as we're doing this really big opening in the front and side body. And find your feet on the floor. See if your toes are gripping. Can you connect with your entire foot, the sole of each foot? Pressing down into your feet. Use your inhale to lift your upper body. One more reverse warrior. Your exhale, windmill your arms as you come up onto the ball and toes of your back foot. And find your way into lunge. So you might need to make some little adjustments here, bringing blocks or pillows under your hands. Make sure your left knee is stacked above your left ankle. And of course, you can lower your back knee down if you prefer that to having the back knee lifted. Plant your right hand under your shoulder, and you can, of course, use a block under that hand. Inhale, your left arm reaches up, twisting upper body to the left. Just gently allowing your breath to get a little bit longer, perhaps softer. Let's exhale, float your left hand back down to the block or floor. Come up on the fingertips or hands on blocks. Let's all lower the back knee if it's still lifted and then untuck your back toes. So we're more in our low lunge position. Engaging your core, make your way up, resting hands onto your left thigh this time. I like to just stack my hands on top of each other, press down into my leg to press down into my foot. And that helps to keep that left leg stable and connecting. You might stay right here or to move more into a hip flexor, a deeper hip flexor stretch. <clears throat> left hand rests on top of your left thigh. And then your right arm starts to reach up toward the ceiling. Feel free to explore letting hips move forward any amount as your heart continues to lift. So we're still keeping our spine long as we're stretching into the front of that right hip flexor. Using an exhale, start to release, bringing your right hand back down, your left hand back down. Let your hips rock back and then find your way into either a table pose or a plank pose. And I'll invite you just to move through a vinyasa of your choice, either from knee plank, lowering onto your belly and coming up into cobra, or from full plank, lowering halfway down and then coming up into your upward facing dog. Let's all exhale, press back into table or downward facing dog. Long breath in through your nose. 
Long breath out through your mouth. In your own time, start to bring your knees down onto the floor and make your way around to seated. You can still be sitting on a blanket if you'd like. And I invite you to join the soles of your feet together. Put your knees out to the sides. So you can draw your feet in as close to your body as is comfortable for you. Holding on to either your feet or your ankles or your shins, whatever's within reach. We'll start just by sitting up tall and actually getting a shoulder stretch here, straightening through the arms. You might find you can lift your heart and start to lean back just slightly. And you might experience a stretch across your shoulders, maybe the back, the neck. And from here, let's come back to neutral in the spines, just letting those shoulders relax, not holding on so tight with straight arms. And you might start to reach your heart forward, hinging forward over your legs. Elbows can find the inside of your thighs. Just start to open your hips more, pressing them out to the sides. Try to keep Pretty long spine here, a little bit of rounding in your back is natural, but always think about heart reaching forward. If you're feeling pretty open this morning, you might start to walk your hands forward. Just kind of tenting fingertips on the floor and starting to tiptoe those fingertips forward little by little. And slowly start to make your way back up to a neutral spine if you have folded forward. Take the knees together, feet together, and start to make your way down onto your back. But before you do, you might want to have a block or a firm pillow handy for our supported bridge pose that we'll do shortly. And this might be a good time to just move your blanket out of the way unless you want to open it up across your entire mat for padding. That's nice too. So just letting yourself lower down with your knees bent. And come onto your back with your arms down beside you. And we'll find a figure four. It's another hip opener today. Lifting your left leg up into the air, bending your left knee, and then draping your left ankle over your right thigh. Try to keep your left foot flexed with your toes drawing toward your shin here. That's just to protect all your joints. Take the time to check in with your body because this might be enough of a hip opener for right now. And if you do feel you'd like something a little different, then you can explore lifting your legs into the air taking your hands around the back of your right thigh and just drawing your right thigh in toward your body to get even a deeper stretch in your left hip. Again, just noticing if what you're experiencing in your body is tolerable to you, even if there's a little discomfort there, a little tension. Can you still breathe? Can you still sense the earth below you, keeping you rooted down with its gravity?
And if the answer is no, then that's just a sign that you're a little too far into the stretch. It's a little too much in this moment. At your own pace, we'll gently start to release right foot back down to the floor. Without putting the left leg down, you're just going to lift your ankle off your knee and square your hip. Then take your left hand or your hands behind your left thigh and start to straighten your left leg up toward the ceiling. So the leg does not need to go all the way straight here. Any amount is fine. Point and flex through your left foot a few times. Circle your ankle. And then just finding some stillness with your foot and breathe into this stretch. And if you need more, Start to walk your hands further up your leg, drawing your straightening leg toward your upper body. If it's available, your peace fingers on your left hand can loop around your left big toe. Right hand might just rest on your belly if you grab your toe with your left hand. And then we're just extending that left heel up toward the ceiling as you draw your leg toward your body. As you exhale, start to let your left knee bend and release your foot or leg. And just plant that left foot back down onto the floor. Figure four, other side. Lifting right leg, flex right foot, and then drape your right ankle across your left thigh. And you might just hang out right here, or you, of course, have the option to lift your left leg and hold on to your left thigh with both hands. And just notice that one side might feel a little bit different than the other side. And you can just get to know these little unique things about your body, asymmetries that are very natural, but mean we might need to care for one side of our body a little differently than the other side. As you breathe, see if you can soften around your shoulders and your neck and jaw. Slowly begin to lower your left foot back down if it's lifted. Releasing your figure four, but keeping your right leg lifted, let's hold behind our right thigh this time, reaching right foot up toward the ceiling. And start to just move through your ankle and your foot. And when that feels complete, you can just hang out in this stretch, hands behind thigh or hands walking up to calf or peace fingers on the right hand looping around right big toe. And just reaching your right heel toward the ceiling as you draw your leg closer toward your upper body.
Start to bend your right knee, release your toes or your foot, and bring your right foot back down to the floor. Make sure that your spine is neutral in one long line. Feet hips width distance or slightly wider. And start to walk your heels in nice and close to your glutes. Just nice deep bends in your knees. I'll invite you to find a supported bridge pose. So you can use a firm pillow for this or a yoga block if you have one. Just take the block or pillow in one hand, have it down beside your body. As you press down into your feet, let your hips lift toward the ceiling, just enough to bring your block or your pillow underneath your low back. So you want it to support the area at the back of your hips where your sacrum is, instead of pressing into your vertebrae. Once you've found a comfortable place to let your body rest on your support, and let your arms just rest down beside your body, or maybe the arms want to reach overhead, holding opposite elbows. And just invite everything to start to soften with each breath out. You can, of course, explore lengthening one leg or the other. And just find any variation with your legs that you'd like for your final front body opener. If you feel that you have the support under you to do a little inversion, you might explore lifting your knees up into the air and then extend, extending your feet toward the ceiling. And just letting that block or firm pillow elevate your low back a few inches away from the floor. As the feet and legs just have a different experience here, going upside down, mixing up the circulation, allowing for some lymphatic drainage. I'll share also just one more piece about inversions, going upside down, even just legs up in the air like this. In the yoga philosophy, there are purposes for each pose and each shape. And when we go upside down, it's meant to really facilitate a shift in perspective. So just take this time to gaze up at your toes, looking up at the ceiling and up at your feet. Feel how your upper body is holding you instead of your lower body. If you ever feel like you just really want to shift in perspective, then I invite you to try going upside down for a little while. If your legs are still lifted, gently begin bending your knees and let your feet float down to the floor. We'll start to transition off of your block or pillow. No pressing down into your feet with your knees bent. Lift your hips enough to remove the support from underneath you, and then start to roll gently back onto your back. Moving props off to the side. And let your arms reach out from your shoulders in a T shape, palms turned up. Walk your feet 
and your thighs together. And then just gently lower your knees over to the right hand side. We'll find a gentle twist in our spine. Your gaze might move over your left shoulder. Or of course the gaze can just stay straight up at the ceiling. Notice if there's a quality of softness anywhere in your body. And can you breathe in a little more to create more space? Bring your gaze back to the ceiling and your knees up to center. And then just take a moment to make sure your spine is still neutral before moving to the other side, knees to the left. Option to move your gaze over your right shoulder. Taking your time, make your way onto your back, drawing both of your knees into your chest. Give yourself a big squeeze, lifting head and shoulders or not, just wrapping arms around your knees, hugging everything in for a few moments, maybe closing your eyes, tucking your chin. And then make your way into the resting pose of your choice. You can lie flat on your back for a Shavasana. You can of course bring a blanket under your knees or over you for some added warmth or support. If you prefer to keep your knees bent or even find rest in a seated position, then you're welcome to do that. If you're lying flat on your back, take a moment to really take up space with your body, letting your feet, your heels reach forward, your arms out from the sides, drawing your shoulders down away from your ears to lengthen your neck. Take a moment to take a long breath in and a long sigh out your mouth. Letting your breath find its natural rhythm with no effort.
And gently begin to bring your awareness back into your body. Noticing the quality of your breathing. In your own time, begin to make very small movements with your fingers and toes. Your ankles and wrists. Unhinging your jaw, let your head rock slowly side to side. If you'd like to reach your arms overhead, find a long stretch with your whole body for a couple breaths. And in your own time, you just make your way over onto your side and we'll meet there, resting on the side of your body for four or five breaths, allowing nice long transition time. Keeping your gaze soft and moving slowly. Begin to press your way back up into a comfortable seat. Finding a long spine. Let's do a couple more sun breaths as you inhale. Sweep your arms out and up, gathering air, the energy, joining your palms. Exhale, draw it down into your body. Again, inhale, reaching out and up. And exhale, settling and grounding. One more time. Inhale, out and up. And exhale, hands to heart center. As your hands move past your face, let your gaze lower, chin tucking, shoulders softening. And I invite you all just to send yourself some gratitude and acknowledgement for your efforts in being here this morning. And taking this time to do something for your body, for your spirit. And thank you all so much for being here today. It's really lovely being able to have this connection with you all this morning. I bow to you. Namaste.